Dr. Sandra, who's the head of pediatric ophthalmology at Arvindai Hospital in Coimbatore, to talk about the optical management options in myopia. Um, thank you very much, uh, chairpersons, and uh, Dr. Shivangi ma'am and uh, Rohit sir for your kind invitation. So I'll be uh, touching upon the optical management options uh, today. I think myopia is a very hot topic, and we've been having almost three or four uh, sessions on myopia itself, this uh, AOC. And I do not have any financial interest. So um, just I think the previous speakers have given a very good case as to why myopia should be controlled, because most of the cases it is going to progress into early adulthood. In the Comet, st uh, Comet study, they found that 50% stabilizes by the age of 15, only 50%, and 75 by the age of 18. So we should do something to control myopia, otherwise it can lead to vision-threatening complications. So the myopia treatment includes myopia correction uh, by way of single vision glasses or contact lenses, whereas when you come to myopia control, it has various options like uh, orthokeratology, nightwear lenses, daytime multifocal contact lenses, specially designed ophthalmic spectacle lenses, pharmaceutical therapy as has already been detailed. But to top it all, definitely in all cases, we do need environmental and behavior modifications without which none of the other interventions will uh, really play a good role. So I'm going to be talking on specially designed ophthalmic spectacle lenses, which is a form of uh, optical treatment. The benefits of spectacles over the other forms is the children are already very adaptable to using spectacles. It is straightforward and less intrusive uh, intervention. And for myopia, full correction is always recommended. But what is wrong with giving the single vision spectacles? The single vision spectacle lenses have been found to provide less than a 14% decrease in myopia progression. So uh, we did a short study on the single vision spectacle lenses in our uh, hospital, where we just took around 100 patients with an average age of 13, and we followed them up for nine months, uh, approximately. And to our surprise, we found that almost 59, 60% of them needed a change and uh, with atropine, 26% uh, needed a change. So the question is of whether we should be giving the single vision lenses at all in cases where we find a documented progression. So why is it that the single vision lenses uh, causes a lot of progression in myopia is because it induces a hyperopic uh, defocus in eyes which are already having a hyperopic defocus. It can cause a lot of progression in myopia, whereas all the myopic uh, the uh, lenses which are designed to control myopia, they induce a myopic defocus that inhibits eye growth. So uh, these are some of the providers uh, which provide uh, myopia control spectacle lenses. So let us look at some of them. The Zeiss myovision glasses which were introduced uh, quite a few years back uh, is a highly asymmetric spectacle lenses where in the center you have an undisturbed foveal vision and in the periphery they gave relative plus power to partially compensate for the peripheral hyperopic shift. And uh, there is the Zeiss MyoKids lenses where they have a near addition in cases where you find that there is a near esophoria and there is a uh, lag of accommodation, you can prescribe MyoKids lenses. The latest addition to the Zeiss armamentarium is the MyoCare design, which is cylindrical annular refractive elements, which has the plus addition on the anterior lens surface so they work by creating a simultaneous competing defocus. So what happens here, as you can see, there is a central clear zone of seven millimeters in the up to nine age group and the nine millimeters in the above nine age group. The central zone provides for the clear distance vision. And in the mid periphery, you are having these areas of uh, uh, zones where you have the cylindrical elements that create the myopic defocus. So there is a single vision uh, and there is intermittent zones that induce the myopic defocus and by way of this design, it uh, creates a hyper, uh, like a myopic defocus and uh, reduces the progression of myopia. So they have two platforms, a Myocare S for children younger than 10 years where you have the seven millimeter central addition and the Myocare S which has a nine millimeter zone for children over 10 years. So the main surface add in the uh, Myocare design is plus 4.6 diopters and in the myocare is around 3.8. So the uh, why it is so? Because younger children have a greater tendency to progress and in the older age group above 10 years, the, ch the progression rate is lesser and also the adaptation is easier with the nine millimeter zone as compared to seven millimeter zone. In the above 10 year age group, they have more of near vision demands and also the adaptation to seven millimeters will be a little less, though in highly progressive cases, you can try the myocare in older age group also. 
So the power range is plano to minus nine spherical and minus six cylindrical. So these are the clinical trials which are currently going on with the Zeiss MyoCare lenses. As you can see, many of them are in the one year or within the two year, uh, and many of these studies are in uh, China and a uh, few in uh, Europe as well. There are single and multicenter studies. So in uh, coming to our personal experience, we have a six months uh, follow-up results with 50 children who were uh, corrected between 0.75 to minus 6 diopters fitted with the MyoCare uh, spectacle lenses compared to single vision age match group with uh, 63 eyes, 9 to 14 year age group. The baseline spherical and axial length was very comparable between the two groups as you can see, minus 2.39 versus uh, 2.49. And at six months, we did find a slower progression with regard to both the spherical equivalent and the axial length in the MyoCare using children as compared to the children who are using single vision lenses. 0 0.04 uh, plus minus 0 0.13 in the MyoCare group versus 0.29 in the uh, single vision using children. And the progress in of more than 0.5 doctors was nil in MyoCare versus around 14.8 children with single vision wearing lenses. And similarly, we found an actual length reversal in 24% of children who are using MyoCare versus 5.6 children who are using the single vision uh, glasses and around 50% of single vision users required a glass change by even six months as compared to 10% with the MyoCare lenses. So coming to the next uh, lens, which is the defocus incorporated multiple segments as marketed by the Hoya. The central clear zone here corresponds to the wearer's central uh, refractive power and the mid periphery you find a honeycomb design, 50 to 50% area between clear vision and the added segments and this gives a plus uniform addition of 3.5 in the mid peripheral area. So uh, here there are a lot of st published studies, they have been around for around six, to, uh, around 6 years in the international market, in India it's been available for the last 2 years. And they, a uh, lot of studies have reported good results with the DIMS technology. And uh, uh, there was a poster uh, recently uh, in the 2023 annual meeting which showed a 44% uh, had less than 0.25 annual myopic change with the DIMS glasses. And 22% showed no change or reduction in myopia. Similarly, in Asian children also there have been a couple of studies which show that the changes in spherical equivalent refraction in European children are comparable to that which find in Asian children also when you compare between the DIMS and single vision glasses. And similarly, with regard to axial length, 40% had a less than 0.1 millimeter annual uh, axial length elongation with the DIMS and 19% showed no elongation or axial length shortening. So this axial length shortening is something that we see across all types of optical platforms, a few in atropine as well, which we don't see that often with the children who are using the single vision uh, glasses. And uh, similarly, as you can see, the actual length uh, changes in Asian children also similarly, like 57% uh, showed between um, 0 and 0 0.3 millimeters with the DIMS, whereas only 16% with the single vision, and more than 0.3 millimeters, you see around 84% of children on single vision, very less with the DIMS. So DIMS also works well in atropine, as shown by my previous speaker. So you can always, it's very uh, amenable to combination therapy as well. In case you find significant progression with glasses or with atropine, you can add the second one as an additional option. And uh, you can see with the graphs where uh, the green one is with the atropine and you know the red with atropine with DIMS, you see very good control when you add, uh, use a combination therapy. And uh, this is our experience, uh, 205 eyes of 103 patients over a one year period, mean age of study population being 10 years, and 57% uh, males, 32% had a family history of myopia, 80% of them were prior single vision users for a minimum of uh, two years before we started them on DIMS. And uh, the spherical progression with the DIMS was, sorry, with the single vision prior to start of DIMS was minus 1.28 per year. And after the start of DIMS, it was minus 0.1. So that you can see that's the same patient there. So, uh, uh, so and the actual length also we found a significant reduction in progression. And 16 patients need to have a lens replacement. 31 patients showed actual length regression. So coming to the HALT technology by uh, uh, marketed as Telest by Silla, 
Here also we find uh, single vision uh, in the central zone and a myopia control zone which compo uh, comprises of 11 rings, 121 contiguous aspherical lens slits, creating a volume of uh, defocus in front of the retina and thus preventing the progression of myopia. A lot of RCTs already published on the efficacy of ACLR celest lenses as well. Uh, here you can see almost a 67% uh, reduction in progression uh, on of spherical equivalent and 60% uh, sorry for the axial length and 60% for the spherical equivalent and so th this is the kind of tabulates our experience with the HAL, MyoSmart and MyoCare over a one year period but though the number of lenses are not uniform, a number of patients are not uniform because this is a clinical study, it is not an RCT. So uh, uh, though it will be much good uh, to compare similar numbers, but the age, gender, family history, single vision, glass use, uh, the initial sphere all are very comparable between all the three groups. The initial spherical equivalent was also nearly the same as 3.17 in HAL, 2.89 in MyoSmart and 2.25 with the MyoCare. So at the first review, we find, um, so this is a comparison here. Initially, we had uh, minus 3.45 with the HAL. At review one, it was minus 3.49. Similarly, in MyoSmart, it was minus 3.32 to minus 3.38. And with MyoCare, it is minus 2.45 to minus 2.48. So this is the progression that we noted in six months. Uh, the review two, we do not have that many good number of patients. So the progression with regard to spherical equivalent you see is very comparable among the three groups, 0.1 in HAL and MyoSmart as compared to 0.05 in MyoCare. And this is the comparison of axial length among the three groups. Uh, you can see that 24.52 uh, to 24.55 in HAL, MyoSmart 5.4 to 5.9, MyoCare 2.1 to 2.3. So you can see a very small elongation in axial length, but these are all very short follow-ups. We need at least a two-year follow-up to come to meaningful conclusions. So this is the, uh, like, uh, the progression rate that we had over six to nine months of follow-up in all the three groups, 0 0.07 versus 0.11 versus 0 0.05. All the three are much better than your single vision glasses is what I would like to say. And uh, we also have a lot of other optical management solutions like the day wear or a soft or ortho -K lenses, though we do not have personal experience in them. Uh, but uh, there are a lot of studies to show that they work as well in patients who want to uh, wear a non-glass uh, solution. So peripheral myopic defocus would definitely slow down the progression of myopia associated with good visual function. Most of the patients adapt very well to these lenses and we did not have that many adaption, adaptation issues. They resolve within a week unless there is a problem with decentration or a wrong refraction. And uh, use of the, these lenses de delayed the myopia progression and axial length Combination of atropine and these glasses should be considered. In our experience, we did not uh, use uh, peripheral refraction as much, though uh, there are a lot of people who are studying that as well, and that would be also uh, good to see uh, the effect of peripheral refraction and uh, these glasses. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra, for this nice lecture and summing your experience. Thank